Welcome to the second mini lecture in the series on macronutrient digestion and absorption. This one is a little bit different. It's about sugars and sweetness and why certain compounds taste sweet. This slide is to remind you about the biochemical structure of several common sugars or sweeteners. On the left, we see table sugar or sucrose, which is a disaccharide of glucose linked to fructose. In the center is corn syrup, which is essentially just hydrolyzed cornstarch. It's all glucose and small polymers of glucose. On the right is high fructose corn syrup, where we start with the glucose in corn syrup and it's enzymatically treated to convert some of that glucose into fructose. So high fructose corn syrup typically has close to a 50-50 ratio of fructose and glucose. Sometimes there's a bit more fructose than glucose, sometimes a bit more glucose than fructose. This table summarizes the three sweeteners we described on the previous slide here at the top and compares them to honey, which is a combination largely of fructose with some glucose and other uh, dianologosaccharides, and uh, another common um, modern sweetener, agave syrup, which is mostly fructose, with the remainder being glucose and, and uh, some other carbohydrates. Note that both table sugar here and high fructose corn syrup here are each about 50% glucose, 50% fructose. So the question is, under what condition might this cane sugar and high fructose corn syrup affect the body differently? Well, we think that usually there is no significant difference. But if the enzyme sucrase were ever rate limiting, the intestinal enterocyte enzyme that cleaves glucose from fructose in, in sucrose, if that enzyme were ever uh, diminished or acting slowly, then these would likely have a different effect on the body. The fructose and high fructose corn syrup, the fructose and glucose might be absorbed more rapidly under those conditions compared to cane sugar. Most of us love sweet tasting foods and hence sweets and desserts are a major contributor to the obesity epidemic. This table shows the sweetness index of many natural as well as artificial sweeteners. Note that this index is based around sucrose or cane sugar. Fructose is sweeter than, sh than uh, cane sugar or sucrose, and glucose is not as sweet. Note that there are many compounds that are quite a bit sweeter than sucrose. Obviously, the food industry is very interested in creating foods that taste sweet, but don't give us as many calories. This table comes from a database of over 800 natural and unnatural compounds that uh, you can look at at this website. So question, how on earth could so many very different types of compounds all taste sweet? What is your hypothesis? We taste sweetness because of activation of a sweet taste receptor in the mouth, uh, the tongue area, that happens to be activated by a large number of large and small molecules. This image shows a homology model of the taste receptor. So we already know of lots of compounds that can activate the taste receptor and make us have that pleasure of tasting something sweet. And given this current challenge um, launched in the summer of 2017 by Coca-Cola, I think we can imagine there'll, there'll be many more coming on the scene. I do want you to consider, however, if there are any potential downsides to looking for new sweeteners. We, of course, don't know the answer for sure, but we should, also, we should always be projecting into the future and uh, thinking about what might be some challenges coming up. Would these new sweeteners potentially be toxic, potentially cause cancer, and we, maybe we don't know for 10, 20, 30 years? Uh, maybe they come from non-sustainable sources and will actually end up doing damage to the environment. Potentially, 
non-nutritive, non-caloric sweeteners might actually make us eat more. This is a current hypothesis, not proven uh, at this time, uh, but to try to understand why it is that people who consume large quantities of diet soda are often heavier than those who don't. There are other hypotheses as well, but I think this is one that is actively being researched. So this area of sweetening and sweeteners, I think, is one that's around to stay, and it's good for us to have some idea of what's going on and have a healthy skepticism uh, about the future of this.